Hello everyone. In my last video, I mentioned about how we can utilize Computer Vision API to analyze any image using built-in tags. So as part of this video, let's take a bit of deep dive wherein we will actually do customization in our analysis process. So this time, rather than completely using the existing identifiers or tags, we will actually go ahead and label our images by ourselves. And this we are doing before submitting all our images for the analysis. So here comes the custom vision API for our rescue. So unlike computer vision service, custom vision allows us to specify the labels for our images as well as we can train the custom model to detect those. Now, what all major steps are involved to perform all these analysis steps with these customizations? So here are a few of those. So as a starting point, first we need to collect the images uh, for both training as well as for prediction. Once images are collected, all the images in the training set need to be labeled or tagged as per the identified category. Then comes the training part. So where in training, <coughs> sorry, in training part, we need to set the images or fed the images to the algorithm and algorithm will calculate its own accuracy by testing itself on our training image sets. So once algorithm is trained, we can e evaluate the system, test it and retrain it if required. And if ev everything went well, then it means algorithm is ready to classify images using our image recognition app. Now for custom vision API, in order to use that, there are two options we have. The first one is it is available as an SDK, as well as it is also available as a web interface and that we can access using custom vision.ai URL. So either of these options works pretty well and we can offer any of these. With this, with this much of theory, let's jump on to the hands-on part. And for that, let's start by logging on to the Azure portal. So I'm on my Azure portal and we need to go here and search for custom vision. So on the marketplace, you can see that custom vision is appearing. And here we need to do it for both training and the prediction. So let's select both. Provide your subscription. Uh, you can create your resource group or even you can utilize the existing group if you have. Uh, just rename them this custom vision service. And next comes the training location. So you can choose whatever the closest location to you, whichever the location which is closest to you. So for me, it is West. So... I can choose West, US, and here pricing tier, we can go for the standard one. But if you, you have already created one, so for me, I have already created one subscription, so it is not allowing me to, but in your case, you will get one free one also. Similarly, for prediction, you can choose the location, whichever is closer, and then prediction tier. So here also, you will get two S0 and the free tier. So for me, it is not appearing because I have already utilized those. So now once all these things are populated, click on review and create. And once clicked, you will get the endpoints and the keys for this custom vision service. So in my case, I have already created. So let's go and go and click on that. So this is how it will look like. So you will get endpoints, keys, everything generated. And this we are going to utilize in our further image classification thing. Now, the next thing what we need is uh, we need to log into the custom vision service. So we can go with any of the option, either using SDK or custom vision. To make this thing simpler, let's go with the custom vision portal. Custom vision.ai. So when you will load this, the very first thing what you need to do is you it will ask you to log in. And the login you have to use using the same Azure credentials, whatever you're logged in on your Azure portal. So once logged in, you will end up on this page and you can click on create new project. Now under create new project, there are certain fields which we need to populate. 
and the first one is the name of the project so here we can provide custom vision image analysis and I will add demo because I already have this name with me description you can mention anything if you have resource uh, so whatever the resource you have created in Azure, it would be appearing over here. So you can simply choose it. Otherwise, you can go ahead and create new. Now project type, uh, currently we are working with a classification. So I will go ahead with the classification option. And classification, under classification, we can go for multi-labor all the multi-class. So multi-class means you can tag only one, uh, per image you can have only one tag. Whereas in multi-label, you can have multiple tags associated to single image. Now here comes the domain. So domain is the, these are the available list of domains which is supported by Custom Vision API right now. And each of these domain optimizes the classifier for specific type of images. So the first two you can see general. So if none of the other domains are working for us or if it is not appropriate or even if you are unsure that which domain is uh, correct one for me, in that case, in the dilemma, you can always select this general. So these three, you can go any of these and then we can have food, landmarks, retail. So these are the three different uh, domains which are defined here. And at the end, you can see there are certain compact domains. So compact are the main domains which are mainly used for image classification on the mobile devices. So I will go ahead and choose food because today we are dealing with the image classification with uh, pertaining to the food. So click on create project. Okay, so now project is created. You can see left hand side workspace name and tagged and untagged if you have any images which are tagged it will be shown over here if any images which are untagged will be shown over here now the very first thing what we need to do is we need to add some of the images over here right so now these images whatever we are adding are the training set and those will be considered as uh, training for our model So there is no upper limit on how many images to choose, but it is recommended, recommended to use at least 30 images per tag as an initial training set. And apart from these training images, we do need a few extra images on which we will be testing our um, model. So now first question is, uh, what is the specification for these images? Or what are the images we can use for the training? So image format could be JPEG, PNG, BMP or even GIF and on the size side uh, it should not exceed more than 6 MB whereas when we are talking about the prediction images then it should be below 4 MB in size now for this particular case I have already collected uh, these images from the internet so you can also download it from any of your sources so you can see there are images pertaining to fruits few are from vegetables few are the mix of fruits and vegetables there are some images for fast food and all these things so these are around 34 images uh, which I'm going to use to train this model so let's go back to this and click on add images so I will go to that part now for adding the images, first of all, I will be choosing only the fruit images and I will tag those. So take this one. So all these I would categorize or tag as, as a fruit. Okay, so nothing to worry. Even if you forgot or you miss any of the images, you labeled it incorrectly, it, we can remove and change it anytime so let's go here and these are the images i have selected now let's say uh, we want to say uh, define tag as fruit fruit so all these types of images are labeled as fruit now all these eight images 
it is uploading well similarly i will go ahead and do for vegetables let's quickly figure it out so here is one this is one this is one i will categorize tomato carrot everything as vegetable go here and um, we will take this as a vegetable we can take this also i think let's go with this as of now so here i will tag these images as vegetable okay done now add few of the images which are both fruit and vegetables so this is the one and i think this also then we can have few more so this one i will categorize and this one also i will categorize so two three four and fruits and vegetables this again this image i think we are done okay let's go ahead with no i think i forgot to tag few of the images let's go ahead and <clears throat> so fruits and vegetable this is one image then i will take this as an image fruit and vegetable these are purely vegetables and let's take this one let's take this one let's take this one okay so i think yeah this one also so let's take all these images and we'll label it as fruit and vegetable fruit and vegetable perfect now one last category which uh, we will be adding is for rest of the food which is like rest all food i am putting directly into the fast food category so mm -hmm. here this one this one and what else we can put take this one as well as these two i will put as fast food okay i think we are good enough fast food okay so let's see now you one important thing to remember is like every tag must have at least 5 images otherwise system will not allow you to train the algorithm so with this data let's go ahead and so if you will go ahead and choose and tag there is nothing and if you will go and choose tags and on the left hand side you have the check box you can filter it out and quickly verify whether it is really categorized correctly or not so fruits we will quickly have a look yes all these are fruits for vegetables let's go and I think this we have labeled it incorrectly, so I will go ahead and change it to. I will remove it. It should be only fruit and vegetables, and then I think rest all are good, perfect. So now, next comes the training part. So we have collected the images, we have marked the proper labels as per our understanding. nothing to worry even if you have marked incorrectly it's okay we can still go ahead and train it if we are meeting the condition that each and every tag has at least 5 images so i will go ahead and train it so under training we have two types of options quick training and the advanced training so quick will not do anything fancy it will make it really very fast whereas in case of advanced advanced training can be used uh, with the fine grain data sets and custom vision api custom vision will also use its own capabilities to train the images best at its level so i will quickly make it using the quick training 
let's give it a few minutes and this iteration will be done. It will take a couple of minutes to finish this training part. Well, so training is done and next comes the performance evaluation, how our model performed on, on our training set. So for that, here you can see that we have three different types of plots here, precision, recall and AP. So before that, I would like to tell that uh, we have already trained our model and uh, this picture depicts how our model performed on the training data. And the custom vision service internally uses k-fold cross-validation process to calculate uh, all these three factors mentioned over here. And how this k-fold works that I'm not going to discuss in as part of this video. Uh, but you can definitely go and search it over the Google and you will find a very great article on it. So keeping that aside. Uh, let's talk about the precision like precision depicts whatever images we have used as a training set are actually part of uh, and some of the training sets or some of the defined tags whereas recall talks about the actual classification means whatever images we have provided as part of the training really belongs to the category which we have associated them so these are two important parameters and ap uh, which is like average precision, it is calculated based on both the precision and the recall for each and every prediction. And here you can see the breakdown that fruit and vegetable 100% here, recall is also saying it is on 100%, so definitely AP is going to be the 100%. So total images we have given 6, 11, 8 and 9. And the reason why we have such figures is because the count or the data we have provided as a training is pretty less. So the more data we have, the better performance and these parameters would be. So next, what we will be working on is on the left hand side, you can see there is a probability threshold, which is set to 50%. So this probability threshold defines the confidence score that predicts that whenever uh, our prediction reaches this point, 50%, then only we will be considered as correct one. Otherwise, we will not take that uh, classification into the consideration. So or let's say if I put it in another way. High probability threshold results in high uh, results in high precision, whereas our recall will definitely be impacted. Whereas in case of low probability thresholds, we may get uh, more false positives because all the images are not matching, but still we are considering them as a match because the threshold is very low. In that case, many of the images will match our defined criteria, which is actually not the case. So let's go, go ahead and try this on one of the image. So for that, we will click on the, we will click on the quick test and it will open up this particular screen. So you can provide even the web URL or you can browse the file which is placed locally. So I will give a try using one of the, let's pick this particular image itself. So it is trying to use this image and it is saying that its probability is fruit, which is 55.5%. 55 and this result is absolutely incorrect. So now next we need to go and check whether we have labeled this particular type of weeds properly or whether we can provide more inputs uh, to certain type of image because model is still not detecting it as a vegetable. So let's go ahead and look at our training images. yeah let's go see this is perfectly all right but it is still not detecting it means if we will provide similar kind of more images things would be better uh, so i will do another test on one of the image so this time let's pick 
this one and see so now you can see that it was good enough to identify that it is a fast food which is 89 percent right so this type of image if you are providing it will definitely go ahead and work with this particular model so next what we need to do is we need to improvise our model so that it can predict better and apart from that i will take one negative case also wherein we will provide some outside image which we didn't even add it as a training set so i will take image as animal and see so it is saying it is a fast food and the probability is pretty low it is below 50 percent so it means we cannot consider in this particular type of image in any of these categories right to, so to solve this particular thing we need to add the negative cases to our model so i will go ahead and add certain images uh, to the negative side so either we can browse it and add it or if you have already predicted you can go ahead click here and you can also tag it here so I will take uh, tag it as a negative or I can even define it as a category unknowns unknown category it means it is not falling into any of my defined categories so click on save so it is already good so I need not to do anything here I need to see why it is falling under this so let's go ahead and tag it as vegetable close it okay now before moving forward uh, I have used the word negative so what are these negative images so negative images means all those images which do not have any matching tags so whenever we are working with the classific image classification, it is always good to have some negative samples along with the positive ones as it will help our model to provide uh, more accurate results. And that's the reason I'm going to add few of the negative images and tagging them as part of, let's take this bird, this dress, and let's take the scenery we can take it is already added so let's go ahead and try these images and i will take all of these as unknown uploading is done so next we need to again go ahead and retrain our model so it will take close to four to five minutes so we have to wait till then so it is still training the model with our changes Let's give it a few more minutes and it will be done. Okay, so training is done and this time you can see that it is 100% precision. Right, and recall is just 25%, which is still making our AP pretty good, which is at 79%. So now you have seen that uh, how retraining the model and adding more images and adding the proper categorization improved the precision to 100% and here you can see that unbalanced data 
because we have put few images in fast food we have put more images in vegetable and so this particular count is not at all balanced so it is always recommended that you put almost equal counts in all the categories whatever we have defined especially the categories which are apart from the unknown we have so this is how the training works and this time if i will again go and do a quick test let's browse the same file and see how things are this time so you can see that now monkey is not part of fast food rather it is pass, uh, part of a unknown category which is 72.9 percent mm -hmm. right i will quickly go ahead and try out one more image uh, let's take this one okay this is the image of a dress and it should again fall under the unknown which is still on the border but yeah model is still performing good because our threshold is just 50 percent and here it is falling under unknown category with probability of 50.1 so the more you will train the more data you have the more better categorization and the tagging you have the better results we will get so now this is how we used to train uh, we can further improvise it but i'm not going to take an additional any additional iteration as part of this rather what do we can do now is so whatever we have done till now is everything is inside this portal custom vision dot api ai now what if you want to utilize this classification model outside this portal right for that we have to make it available and that can be done using publish so there is a button on the left hand side we can click on publish so that we can access all these changes using our prediction apis so here it is asking which um, iteration do you want to publish so i will go with the latest iteration and here let's select your prediction resource which is already created in azure click on this and it is still publishing and yeah it is published you can see on the left hand side published and uh, another thing you can see is it is now converted it to unpublished on the left top part click on this prediction url so when we will click on this it will take a few seconds so we will get two we will get two type of image url so if you are working with the web based images then this is the url which we need to use but if you are dealing with the local images then this is the url which we are supposed to use so we need content type prediction key and the content of the image file which is in the form of bytes and this is the url which we can use it so i will quickly go ahead and show you one of the console application which i have already created so this is the console application and what we are doing here is in this method uh, it is expecting what is the prediction key you want to use so for prediction key we will go ahead and take it from the azure portal so it is loading okay i will go to my predictions go to key points and here is the key so i will quickly copy it and paste it over here next thing we need is the prediction url so prediction url is the same which we got it over here so i'm going to take this entire url from here and paste it here right so we have key we have url as well as uh, it is talking about the content type which is application octet stream so it is already set so we need not to do anything and nothing to worry about this code this code you can get it readily available on the microsoft documentation site also so i just picked it from there i have changed this particular key as well as this url and this octet stream apart from this rest all is already available let's go and run it once so you can see that it is the client which we are using it to to test our classifier now i think it is asking for image path so let's take this particular image path 
and it is p1.jpg. So here it will provide you the output and this output is generated from our classifier which we have recently trained. So forget about this iteration and here you can say tags and all these. So it is putting the probability from here we can see the prediction results right so prediction probability here is 67 percent uh, with the category as fast food which is absolutely correct and this is what we are expecting that our image should be in fast food category next it is saying that 14 percent chances that it is falling under the fruit and 13 percent chances that it is falling under the vegetable and again 11 percent chances that it is both fruit and vegetable and 0 0.04 is for unknown it means the highest one which is the fast food with the score of 67 percent so we can say that yes according to my model whatever we have trained this is the accurate categorization so now we can utilize this model anywhere we can predict any image we can utilize these results for further processing or whatever one we want we can go ahead and do it so now we have used the approach from custom vision api portal and i've just used the prediction url to test it but whatever we have done using this portal we can perform each and every single thing using sdk also so it is not at all mandatory to train the model or to upload the image or do anything from this particular web page you can do it everything from the outside also and there are many languages which are supported like c -sharp, python javascript and two more others so you can quickly go ahead and still work with those so yeah that's all i have for today hope you find this session useful so feel free to share it and do subscribe it so that you do not miss my next video see you next time with another great topic thank you